This is World Class Beercast. We're in Denver, Colorado for the 2010 Great American Beer Festival. But the Great American Beer Festival isn't just about one event. There's celebrations all over town this weekend. They're all about one thing, drinking great American craft beer. Wine Coop Brewing Company is a Denver landmark. During the GABF, the line starts early for this popular event. It's the Denver Rare Beer Tasting. You know, I've been in the craft beer business since uh, 1981, and no one's ever actually tried to do the rare beer, so I jumped all over it. We had a bunch of rules, like you can't find it at the Great American Beer Festival, you can't find it in distribution. So all of these are, you know, they're very small batch. They often were only served at the brewery. They're extremely limited. Some of them are just brewer's experiments that they were trying out. The proceeds benefit Pints for Prostate. This event got started working with All About Beer magazine, um, Pints for Prostates. We came together to create the Denver Rare Beer Tasting. Men in prostate cancer and men in beer go together. So we're using the universal language of beer to reach men with an important health message. At the Falling Rock, brewers vie for the title of who has the hoppiest brew in the Alpha King Challenge. But there are a number of events during the GABF at the Falling Rock. It's an opportunity to try a beer you might not get at home. Everything is brought into one state. Everybody can try every different thing. A short ride up the street to the Blake Street Tavern it's the Flying Dog Brat and Gonzo Party. I come all the way up here from Oklahoma for this beer. It's a chance to check out Flying Dog's newest beers, have a brat, and get craft beer lovers together. It's totally delicious, it tastes good, and it's, it's just an experience that you want to live every day. And in Boulder, it's the Avery Throwdown. There's plenty of beer and barbecue at this picnic. It's also an opportunity to talk with Adam Avery. It was a hobby. I mean, I feel lucky. You know, I'm, I'm, this is my hobby. You know, I, I actually figured out a way to make money doing my hobby. And I would say that 95% of the breweries that are in business today, uh, craft industry, are run by, you know, homebrewers and glorified homebrewers. That you know, didn't we, start with the idea to make money, but to make great beer. Correct. And the people that started with the idea of, I'm going to be a millionaire, most of them no longer brew beer anymore. Yeah. That's the cool thing about you know the craft industry is that there's a bunch of bulldogs who decided that we're going to make beer that we want to drink and we're going to educate the consumer to understand the nuances of what beer should be because beer up to that point, up to 20, 30 years ago, had been basically the same beer. I think that there could be three times the amount easily of breweries because I believe that every town, even if it's a town of a thousand people, should have their own brew pub. You know, and I think that brew pubs are like, you know, that's that's where that's going to that's going to be the driving force, I think, of new breweries. And it's also going to help all of us who aren't brew pubs where, you know, we package, you know, beer. But like that's going to be an introduction to a lot of people, you know, as far as like this is the craft, you know, this is craft beer. And then they can go to the liquor store and buy something. So um, I think there's totally room for, you know, more players. It's crazy because 1996, I started making an IPA, our IPA. And so. People would send that beer back at a bar. I would have to go pick up kegs of beer because it was too bitter. It was too much, you know, in 1996. And now, now IPA, you know, within the next few years, I would say it's probably going to be the number one style in America. So say, you know, less than 20 years later from me not being able to sell this style, it just takes time, you know. And I think that the American consumer wants more flavor. You know, it's been proven with wine. It's been proven with coffee. It's been proven with bread. I mean, everything. It's just like, you know, I think that beer is like maybe people look at it and they think, you know, it's kind of the average drink or it always has been, you know, thought of as, you know, working just the average. Working exactly. Working man's beverage. Exactly. And it's been looked at like that. And now that's all changing. You, you talked a little bit about styles and, and you know, uh, macros, bottom fermented lagers. Then you went into the amber ales. Those got to be good when Killian's and those kind of brands. Now we got IPAs are going to be, what's the next one after IPA? Or is it going to be so diverse at that point that there won't be a next one? That's a great question. I, I can't I don't think I can see out that far I think that hops really define beer and so it makes sense that an IPA you know would be the style because see, I would disagree with that. Oh, I think malts oh. define I'm more malt than I am hops right but 
I mean, I, I think that's a good point about beer. Hops can define beer. Malt can define beer. Yeast can define beer. Is that not right? It, it can, definitely. And just to, the, for the record straight, yeast for me is what really defines a beer's flavor. Like it has as much, if not more, flavor profile than anything that you and can do And most consumers it. don't realize right, that. Right, because I can brew a beer with exact same ingredients uh, with our yeast strain, and then somebody else can brew the exact same beer with same ingredients with a different yeast strain. The two beers will not be, they, they won't be identical. They'll be pretty far apart. But I have, a, I have a theory that as I age and as other brewers age and as this generation that grew up with craft beer, you know, becomes older, we can't drink double IPAs all night. Although we'd like to, you know. <laughs> We can't, you know, even just drinking, you know, a 12 pack of, you know, regular IPA these days is like six and a half, seven percent is what an IPA is now. It's just, it, you know, it's not feasible. So I think that, I think we're going to see, it's not, I don't want to say a backlash. I think it's, it's exactly the opposite. It's just like, uh, you know, our industry is evolving. And I think that small extreme beers are going to be the next thing. So like sour beers that are four or five percent that have ton of flavor, but just not a lot of alcohol, you know. Things like when we just started making um, our, our Pilsner, that's like a 4.7% Pilsner, but it's super hoppy. It's got 42 IBUs, it's bitter, it's aggressive. It just doesn't have the alcohol. What's, uh, what's your favorite beer style? Do you have one? Um, I, I mean, I would guess, you know, IPA. IPA? You know, I'm a hop head. You know, I love hops. You can't put enough hops into a beer, you know, and that's, that's me. That being said, you know, I, I enjoy almost every style of beer. I keep coming back to, we want to brew the beer that we want to brew. And so, but you got to have, obviously you got to stay in business, you know? I mean, so. <laughs> there is that evil side of it. Exactly. And so, and, and hopefully, and, and like I said, I mean, we've, we've grown very, you know, kind of slowly. I mean, we, you know, a lot of people think we're a lot bigger than we are because we're in a lot of states. But, you know, we only resonate with a certain percentage of craft beer drinkers. You know, like we're a niche within the niche. Yeah. And so I would say thanks to those people for, you know, understanding our insanity. I'm Jim Scambray. And I'm Bob Mack for World Class Beer Cast. This is World Class Beer Cast, signing off.